seems to be hard because when you're a Christian, it seems like you have more people that are anti-Christian than Christians. Oh, I like see. the group is is like not balanced. It's like there are more people that are against God than for it. And All right. Well, the one thing I can assure you, without a doubt, the easiest thing in the whole wide world to be is a Christian. And anyone who thinks that it's hard to be a Christian is not a Christian. Welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi. Hey, Becky. You're on the air. Uh, yeah, my um, question was, uh, right, people that are racist, um, do they have, like, uh, some sort of complex where they worship Satan or they're of a demonic spirit? Well, number one, there is no such thing as racist. It doesn't exist. And but and those people who are, are, are angry and blame other people are definitely evil. They are being controlled by evil. Their hearts are wicked. And that's why they're doing it. Now, uh, explain why they're wicked for blaming other people. Because they are blind and can't see, their hearts are wicked, and and they blame other others for their failure. Because they cannot see. Now they you said that you know racism doesn't exist, right? And some people are saying that um, when they're called, you know, the N word, or because of slavery and um, police brutality. There seems to be a contradiction where people are saying, oh, it does exist because of those things. Um, if, if racism does not exist, um, what is the explanation for some racist people using the N-word or, you know, some police brutality against uh, black people? Well, number one, there is no such thing as police brutality toward black people. And and the people who use the N word, you say, yeah. And those people who do it, and you, and if you notice, the blacks do it more than any other race on this earth. They're just angry. Their hearts are wicked, and they can't see. Okay, so the people that do use the N word can be wicked as well, uh, unless they're clearly using it as a joke. Because some people can be free from anger, and they can, that words don't mean anything anymore. It, it has no meaning, so they can joke about it and have no meaning about it. They're not trying to hurt themselves or you with the word. But it's all wickedness, and the, the people who are of their father, the devil, they shook a coat evil. They cover it up by calling it racism, uh, police brutality, and all that. They just cover up evil with fancy words. Because, you know, some people say they're not evil for speaking the truth, and they really do feel legitimately that they're being discriminated against. I mean, is it possible that they could be confused and really think that they are being discriminated against, or are they evil? They, they are confused, and they think that people are thinking and feeling what they are feeling because they're living in their imagination, and they don't see that it's them and not someone else. But the devil tells them, you feel this way because someone made you feel that way. Someone said this or that about you. They call you the N-word, and the devil is lying to them, and they can't see. Because do you think the devil causes chaos in the world for, for people to be divided? 100%. Absolutely. He worked through people because he dwells in people. He lives in human be human bodies, right? And he is using mm -hmm. them in order to divide and destroy. Do you think that the world is going to get better at this point or worse? Worse. The world itself going to get worse because human nature is worse. But you could be in the world and not bother, be bothered by it at all if you overcome the world. How do you overcome the world? By overcoming anger and then dying from the ego, the nature of the devil. And you start living from within rather than from without. It seems to be hard to be a Christian in this world because 
a lot of people are against Christians and say that the Bible is not real and God is not real. What, what, when someone says they're an atheist and they say God is not real, but you believe that God is, what do you say to that person? I wish you well. That's all you okay. say. You don't try to convince them about anything. You can't convince a person about God. They either see him or they don't. And as far as Christianity, you say it's hard to be a Christian? It seems to be hard because when you're a Christian, it seems like you have more people that are anti-Christian, that Christian oh, like the group is, is like not balanced. It's like there are more people that are against God than for it. And right. they seem to people that are for God seem to be the minority. And how do you, you know, get along with the people that are the majority versus the minority? Well, the one thing I can assure you, without a doubt, the easiest thing in the whole wide world to be is a Christian. And anyone who thinks that it's hard to be a Christian is not a Christian. Hmm. The easiest thing to be is a Christian. It takes no effort to be a Christian at all. And so anyone that tells you it's hard to be a Christian, they're telling you they're not a Christian. Now, what about people that use the GD word, God's name in vain? So there's some, there are scriptures saying that when you use that word, you go straight to hell. But it seems to be very prominent in Hollywood movies and also in shows. And I do hear the word a lot. And I also hear it from, you know, different people like family members, friends. And is it that people are forgetting that? He, they shouldn't use his name in vain. Or do you think people don't care, or is that is it true that you do go to hell if you use that use God's name in vain? Well, I don't know if you go to hell as a result, but you're already in hell. You can't see, and that's why they do it because they just can't see, and and that's why God said, Christ said, forgive them when Christ was talking to his Father. He said, forgive them; they know not what they do. Blind people, and everyone who has anger is blind, they literally don't know what they're doing. They, don't, they can't see. And you can even ask us, them, why are you doing that? Why did you say that? They'll tell you, I don't know. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I said it. Because they can't see that they're blind and they're driven by the nature, the mindset and emotions of the devil, and it's not them. So it's the devil that's making them say God's name in vain? Absolutely. Oh. Have you? Do you have anger? Only uh, sometimes. Do you um, have? I get frustrated. You have anger. Yeah. And are you a Christian? Um, I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Can you? Uh, I asked Becky if she still has anger. She said yes, and that she is a Christian. Sometimes I think she said. Hey, Becky? Yeah. So you still have anger? Yes. And are you a Christian? Sometimes. And what does that mean, sometimes? Um, You know, because sometimes, you know, I pray to the Lord, and sometimes, you know, I don't, and sometimes, you know, I'll have, you know, good thoughts, and sometimes I have bad thoughts. So it's like, I don't know. It's, um, it's like I'm in the, in between. You know, I, I can't say that I am because sometimes I don't have good thoughts. And I can't say that, you know, I don't believe in God because I do. So I don't know which way, which, which way is correct. And so can you give me an example of a good thought? Uh, just uh, wishing someone success in their endeavor and, um, you know, being happy for someone, um, you know, making it a, a good achievement, you know, um, sending my blessings that they have long and prosperous life and everything works out for them. And why do you call that those good thoughts? Uh, it's good to wish someone well, I think. You know, I think it's, 
a good thing not to have malice or anger towards that person and you know, hatred, you know, it's good not to have those things. And, just, and you're right about that, but that's not a thought. It's a, it's a state of being. You're like, okay. you just naturally wish even your enemy well. Okay. Um, do you believe that? Well, the one thing I want to tell you is that there is no such thing as a good thought. Okay. And and there's no thing as a bad thought. They both all both ways are just lies. It's a setup. Do you believe you t- can overcome anger and and not have it at all? Um, I believe it would take time. And, um, and why? Because when you're in an environment, I guess the world where you just see nothing but negativity. Yeah. And nothing, you know, everything is horrible in the news, everything people are saying, social media platforms, and your brain is filled with imagery of everything bad and everything negative. In my opinion, it's a challenge to overcome that because you see things and hear things that make you angry and make you want to do something about it, like you want to right the wrong, which puts a person in an anger state. But and but to that's, overcome that is a, is a challenge. But that's happening in 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 their world. It doesn't have to happen in your world. You are your world, and you don't have to live like that in your world. But you can let them live like that in their world. No, you want to do something about it. You feel like you want to make it right. You want to. But you can't make it right. Their world. There's nothing. You can't change their world, and there's nothing you can do about it but leave them in their world and let them suffer and die. You have to work on your world. And you can't even save yourself in your own world, but you work on it so you shall be saved in your own world. And your world will be at peace, perfect peace. And whatever somebody else's world is like is on them. You wouldn't be affected. Well, how do you separate your world, though, from the world? It's, it's like you have your world, like you say, but how do you separate your world from, from the world that, that, that you're currently in. By living from within rather than without. So it's is psychological is what you're saying? Well, you over, yeah, you have to overcome this psychological mindset because it is of the world. It's evil. And once you overcome that, you shall be free and in your world, the kingdom of heaven within your world, you're living from within. No matter what somebody else's world is like, it only affects them, and it will not affect you. Even when they try to affect you with their world, they won't be able to do it if you're living truly living from in, within your world. You cannot change okay. another person's world. Even God won't change their world. He's already made it possible for them to enter into a world of perfect peace, but he won't, he'll won't. he let them stay in, in that dark world and let them suffer because they love their suffering. But speaking of suffering, one final question. Do you think that black people enjoy suffering, they enjoy drama, they enjoy problems? 100%. If you try to take their drama away from them or their problem, they will kill you. They love their hell. They Why is that? Because they love evil. They love misery. And they hate peace. They hate God. You think black people hate God? Yes. 100%. And there are some who are waking up and overcoming it, and they love God, but most black people hate God. And that's why they love their misery. And you can't take it away. Well, you can't take it away anyway, but you can't even encourage them to overcome it because they love it. And they hate anyone that tries to tell them you don't have to be that way. You can overcome that. They don't want to hear that. What the... (laughs) <laughs> I 
All right. So, <laughs> Becky, you want to overcome your hell? Yeah. Forgive your mother and return to your father. Forgive your father for not protecting you from your mother, and God will forgive you and and get rid of and your hell will have to disappear away from you. Now, what if your mother is deceased? You realize that she couldn't help herself just as you can't help yourself. You know, you don't want to be angry and afraid and all that, right? But you can't change it because she she gave you her hell when you, she imposed herself on you and just realize she couldn't help it. Her mother did it to her. And then that would cause you to... By you realizing you can't help it, it will cause you to realize she couldn't help it. And since she's dead, it will cause you to forgive her. God will take away the spirit of evil, which is anger and fear. Okay. Have you tried the silent prayer yet? What is the silent prayer? Uh, It's a prayer that, you know how God said, be still and know. And know that uh-huh. he is God. It, it's on my YouTube channel at rebuildingtheman.com. Rebuildingtheman.com. I forgot what. Uh, can I see the other one? Slash prayer. Rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. And it will show you how to be still. And if you do that little hooping and hollering prayer, do your little hooping and hollering first. Because you're hooping and hollering with the devil. And when you're done praying with the devil, be still and know God. He'll bring you out of the imagination. All thoughts are all lies all the time. He will bring you out and make you free. Okay. Well, that's helpful. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. Rebuildingtheman.com slash prayer. All right? Give it a try. Let me know how it goes. Okay. All right. Take care, Becky. Thanks for calling. (laughs) Take care, Jesse. All right. Amazing. 